Why do I play a Joy Jet? It's probably my most played guitar. Uh, I've done more gigs on this guitar than I think on any other guitar. Uh, I do a lot of gigs on my ES-175 or I did do a heap of Sunrising gigs on that because that just feels great, that guitar. But I wanted to talk about why this has pretty much been my main guitar since I think it was 2017 when I got it. And uh, I put it down at various times but I always end up coming back to it and there's some really good reasons for that so stick around I'll talk about that uh, and then at the end of the video I want to talk about you know the best guitar for certain genres the best guitar for you and how to figure that out as well okay so it won't be a hugely long video stick around that's gonna be some really useful advice grab a coffee you could uh, grab a coffee out of an Adrian white mug it's even got a Duo, a, a guitar that looks like a Joy Jet. It's not a Joy Jet. It just looks similar, and, and we'll stick with that theory. So, why do I play a Duo Jet? Well, number one reason. Okay. Well, maybe not the number one reason, but the number one I'm going to start with. They just look fantastic. If that's not one of the prettiest looking guitars you've ever seen, uh, you need new glasses. Actually, I need new glasses, but you, yeah. You're welcome to your opinion, um, but I actually do need new glasses, frankly. Um, so that's one thing, the black, the white, the thick binding, the little, uh, the layers of binding. I've just always really loved that and it really pops. You know, you see Cliff Gallop, those iconic pictures of Cliff Gallop with a duo jet and it just looks fantastic. So that's, that's the thing I'm gonna start with. I just think it looks fantastic. Okay, now uh, the next reason I wanna get into Obviously, we're going to talk about uh, tone and playability and all those kind of things. So, it's interesting to me that this is not the most popular guitar. You know, it's not a, sorry, it's not a particularly popular guitar. You don't see them everywhere like you might see a Telecaster or a Strat or a Les Paul. Uh, bamboozles me from the point of view that I think they this looks just a little classier than those. Um, but again, that's totally an opinion thing. But the cool thing about this guitar and why I keep coming back to this guitar is I feel like you get a really nice cross-section of a lot of different guitars. As you know, I play hollow bodies a lot, you know, hollow body Gretsch's and the AS-175. So this guitar is not a, a full hollow body, but it is chambered somewhat. And I also have a theory or a feeling, or maybe it's just a feel when I play, that the string height uh, with, the, with the bridge up here like that it's reminiscent of, a, of an arch top, you know, so that is definitely something um, that I like the feel of. It, it feels similar to an arch top, you know, I mean, it does have an arched top, but it feels, reminds me of a hollow body, the way you've got that sort of those raised strings. So then, um, in terms of the sound, you know, if I, I get into Telecasters sometimes as well, and sometimes I get right into the, playing my 175, and you've got these two extremes, so you've got a guitar that's, you know, um, you've got your Telecaster that's bright and can feel a little bit thin at times versus the 175, for example, which is a really fat body and can sometimes be maybe a little muddy for lack of a more in-depth description. You know, I know it all comes down to pickups and stuff, but there's obviously harmonically a lot going on in the 175 and it's quite an acoustic tone. So sometimes... I come back to the Joy Jet and I feel like it's a nice marriage of both worlds, not just because it's chambered, but also because the Dynasonic pickups themselves have a really a nice acoustic quality. So that's a really interesting thing. Um, when I pick this up, the, the quality of the pickups plus the chambered body gives me a good solid body, uh, sorry, a good hollow body vibe, but being obviously not a complete hollow body, it's got a little bit of snappiness and response. Uh, like a Telecaster might have, especially on that bridge pickup. Volume. And you can kind of do all that stuff. Actually, uh, there's a video where I did a version of Blue Moon of Kentucky where I played banjo and guitar and stuff. 
and I did this um, country solo on that, and I, I really wished I'd had my Telecaster when I recorded it at the time, but when I actually recorded the solo with this, man, it, it just sounded great. It's like kind of like a Telecaster, but warmer and a little bit sweeter. So it, it can do country, it can do country picking. You do have issues with the bridge, uh, you know, the bridge set, set up that the, the strings can pop off, uh, but that's especially with, for example, a roller bridge or the, the space roller bridge that they come with. I've put a tunematic on this because I want that slightly fatter tone. I really like the tinkle, the sparkle of a roller bridge, uh, but for what I do and for the variation that I want, the tunematic was definitely the way to go. I don't like to mod guitars very much at all anymore. Just like them as they are, but you know that, that to me was a very necessary exchange. So, um, yeah, that bridge pickup really can do that sort of Telecaster thing, but then it's also got, it reminds me a little bit of the Gibson in, in that, uh, in the 175, for example, where you sort of get on that bridge pickup and it's that kind of slightly, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of like that old school, early Sun Records. Almost like it's fat, but not quite enough signal for what you, you want. Like it doesn't quite slice through smoothly. It's, yeah, it's kind of... Yeah, it's a little bit hard to explain, almost like it's underwound slightly. So you get that feeling on a Gibson bridge pickup sometimes too, especially when compared with the neck pickup. So it does a little bit of that, you know, I don't know, it just covers a lot of ground for me. Um, and then on the middle selection, this sound here. It's, it, that is a really underrated sound. It's really bold and round, but with a s little bit of sweetness, obviously, from the mixture of the bridge pickup. Yeah, it's, it's quite nice. You can almost almost think of it like a neck pickup. You can still kind of do that sort of stuff. Uh, what's an example? Quite a delicate tone. So that's a really underutilized guitar sound and probably one of the coolest things about the Dynasonics when you put two of them together. Uh, just sounds incredible. So uh, there's there's that. That's the sound I'm, I'm actually, as I get older, I enjoy more and more. Uh, I'm not sure what that means. Maybe you guys have some ideas. Uh, and then the neck pickup. Now, for jazz gigs, you would not believe how fantastic this guitar is. I think it's actually one of the most underrated jazz guitars. You know, we see people playing jazz on a tally uh, and that totally works fine or it's sort of on a big arch top and there doesn't seem to be a lot in between. Playing jazz on a Les Paul, you know, on the neck pickup volume wound down just a little, it, you know, sounds amazing too. But this to me, it's the best of all worlds. You've got the, the semi-hollow body, so it's almost a little 335-esque. Uh, you've got a fat single coil which gives you open, rich harmonics, uh, you know, and, and detail in the tone. And... Uh, what else can I say? It just it's it's bold and round the tone, um, with the the other qualities that I mentioned as well. So oh, and it's got some punch like a Telecaster, like some directness. That's the last one that I was getting to. Uh, what can I play? So let me turn off the Nocturne Mystery Brain. Great pedal, love that pedal. Always use it, but I'm going to take it off for the moment. I said I'm going to turn it off for the moment. Let me try that again. There we go. So. Um, Uh, just want to play more stuff like that. smooth, sweet, and round. Don't get me wrong, I love playing all that stuff on the 175. I love playing, I've got a big arch top there. The Telecaster always sounds good. 
it's just a nice mix of all worlds. And actually, my theory is that maybe that's why this guitar is not so popular because it's kind of doesn't, you know, what is the Duo Jet sound? What's its own thing? It's kind of this twangy, bitey thing, uh, or it's known that way, you know, from Cliff Gallup, those recordings. But I don't know, there's not necessarily a particularly defined description uh, that you would maybe think about when you think about a Joy Jet, and I think that maybe is one of the reasons for its, you know, the, particularly with these pickups, for its lack of popularity. But, uh, yeah, I love it for that reason. I think it's actually a really great thing. So the last thing that I wanted to talk about, I did promise you that, uh, and the video's gone a little longer than I expected, but I did promise you, in terms of what guitar for what genre and what's actually best for you, I actually think it's all a bit of a load of crap, to be honest. So, um, you you know, at the end of the day, you, you've got EQ settings on your amplifier, you've got pedals, you've got a whole lot of options for tweaking your guitar and getting all the different tones. And one of my favorite examples, Ed Bickett, Telecaster player, who is a, a phenomenal jazz player, and he really set the scene for, hey, you know, look at that guy, he's playing a Telecaster for jazz. All the other guys were using arch tops. He was previously using an arch top, but he sounded as good as anybody. So even the whole thing about a Telecaster, you know, can do everything. I feel like a Les Paul can do everything or a Gretsch can do everything if you want it to. Um, yeah, I mean, it's Ted Nugent played an ES-175 in a rock outfit, you know, and I almost think it, what's your favorite guitar? You'll find someone using it in every genre, you know, uh, the name escapes me. There was, a, there was a jazz player who played in Benny Goodman's band and he used a Gretsch 6120 and he was a jazz player, a swing player. So there, are, it's really how you play it, what you make of it and how you set your amp and everything like that. I'm still going to make those fun videos where I compare and say, what's the best guitar for jazz? What's the best guitar for rockabilly? Because it's fun. It's a little bit of fun and we're all entitled to our opinion. Um, but on the whole, if we're just being real, you if, pick the guitar you like the best by looks or feel or whatever, or the one that means the most to you. You know, my wife bought this guitar for me, uh, which was such a big deal, so maybe that's partially why it's my favorite guitar. I don't know, I don't really care. It works, and you know, just keep that in mind. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy my channel, please subscribe, please comment, jump across to the Patreon. So thank you so much, and I will see you guys in the next video.